Hello everyone, this is Martin with Octoparts. We're so glad to have one of our users join us today and talk about how Octoparts help him collect the data that he needs for his PhD research paper. Let's dive in and start the online interview. Great, so for our audience, uh, yeah. so we have Junaid here today to talk about how he feels about the Octoparts. So Junaid, yeah. uh, could you please give a briefly Brief introduction by yourself. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. I'm Junaid here. I'm doing PhD in mass in computer science. Specifically, my research area is data science. So right now I'm um, PhD in Zhengzhou University, Zhengzhou, Henan, China. So this is all. So I will share my some uh, experience about uh, how I used Octopus for my first and initial research paper. Great. So Janae also speaks yeah. great Chinese. So if you're interested, <laughs> you want to say hi in Chinese? Yeah, yeah, I can say a little hi. Ni hao, ni hai hao ma. Yeah, that's pretty good. So Janae, so <laughs> we'll start with my first questions. So yeah, what yeah. kind of data do you usually need for your academic research? Uh, uh, as far as my uh, research tailored to the data, right now I'm working specifically on textual data, like text data and the platform, I am specifically focusing on Twitter because as I, I have seen during my literature review, uh, Twitter has become a research topic and research mm -hmm. application for all the research people who are interested in data analytics. So. Uh, my required data and that suits to my research is textual data, but mm -hmm. specifically from specifically from Twitter because people they can use uh, data from uh, like textual data they can get from Facebook and yes. YouTube and uh, Wikipedia's and any other website. But I'm targeting Twitter. Yeah. So I'm curious, like before you using Octopus, how did you collect such kind of data? Oh, that was hard. I, that was very hard, actually. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, during, uh, I, I, I remember during the initial stages of brainstorming for my research paper, I was collecting manually data. Like, uh, first of all, manually data, maybe using public data set from Kajal and another web, uh, data set website. Then I explored Twitter API, application programming interface. Then I explored Twitter API. Then I tried to connect uh, collect mm -hmm. data from API, but the problem was uh, that is restricted. Restricted in a sense, first they uh, give you some limited data. Yes. Then again, uh, you can uh, at the say one time you can access some limited data and for specific uh, period of time, like for example, in. 15, uh, in 15 minutes, you can send specific requests to Twitter to collect some data. That's right. So that was very annoying, uh, actually. And because uh, my research needs was needed uh, archived data, like from the old, uh, mm -hmm. really recent ones. So Twitter was actually giving data for not more than seven days. So uh, I was, I was, I had needed three months, seven months, eight months data. So that is why I turned it to octopus actually. So this was the whole story of. Yeah, that sounds painful to me already. And yeah, yeah. I guess lots of people share the same feeling. So uh, yeah. how so how did you learn about web scripts, web scraping? Oh, web scraping, uh, honestly speaking, I did not know nothing about web scraping. I, I, I remembered in my master's thesis uh, I have doing, I, I developed a simple web crawler that was to detect some URLs or website addresses from social networks. But other than that, other than that I had no idea. So mm -hmm. when I started to explore Octopus, then I got to know what actually web scrapping is, how it works, how it made life easier for research people and also industry people as well. So this is the main uh, topic or idea to get into the web scrapping oh okay yeah and i just heard you got you also got a master degree 
Oh iya, it's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can make a master's degree and you're working on a PhD. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Whoa. yeah I'm also right. planning to do after that I'm also planning to do some postdoc here. Yeah, okay. So, um in your opinions, how do you think uh West Gribbon industry will affect people in higher education industry? Oh, this industry, uh, uh, basically when people uh, knows, uh, heard about web scaling, they only know that uh, may, maybe it targets the industry people like in practical, real life practical, but they doesn't know that in the research field of data analytics, it can also positively impact to higher level studies, higher level mm -hmm. I mean by research, research studies. So uh, 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 you see that right now, all the world is about data, whether it's a text data, images data, uh, video data. So it's all about data. Yeah. So uh, you need to use that data to transform into information because data is like this level, then uh, information, then knowledge, then up to higher level. So you need data. So the mostly generated data, according to later research, is generated from social media. Yes. And Again, uh, from my literature, again, from social media, it focuses on Twitter because uh, as soon as something happens, the people rush to Twitter to tweets about breaking news and headlines yeah, exactly. and assignments, all the stuff. So it uh, so there, then uh, some of them, they need the real time data. Some of them, they need the archive data as me. So as Twitter has some limitations, so yeah, exactly. There, there comes the web scrapping comes mm -hmm. to the research. So web scrapping, I'm not saying that people uh, who use Twitter, web scrapping helpful for them. I'm saying that it's helpful for everybody. Like people use the reviews, Wikipedia's data, Facebook data, any type of website. So there is what web scrapping comes into the research industry and it can impact people's life by saving time and cost and everything. Mm, yeah, exactly. So next is our highlights. So mm. how did you discover Octopars? Whoa. Uh, uh, first, I, I, just, I want to say like three to four words in a short, then I will explain a little. Feasibility, mm -hmm. flexibility, easy to use, budget friendly, and very cooperative from the customer point of view. This is the main, main uh, notes, main high words I get, get by using the uh, Octopus. Then feasibility in a way it has very simple interface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Easy to use, you don't need to go into the complexities of programming. So that's the main thing that researchers are finding. Because all the complexities and programming things, it's at, it at the bachelor level or master level. Researchers only do the like novelty things, so they do a lot of less technicalities. Then, uh, budget friendly, it's suitable for so, uh, students. Yeah, uh, the example is here. I am the, I, I am student, so I was using Octopus. It's uh, budget friendly for me, and also they also give some discount and cooperate cooperation to built custom templates you know uh, there are very good templates uh, in there but if you need tailored template templates customized so they can also some little editing to those peoples as well so these are the main things that i got by using octopus and i also of course will recommend to my colleagues and other friends as well yeah thank you very much you said lots of yeah. nice about octopus <laughs> but like do you have any suggestion for auto parts? How can we make it better? Oh, uh, I have. Uh, I also, uh, while uh, working with the team, uh, Miss Liz is here, and also mm -hmm. uh, Miss Xiao. I think he's she is in uh, USA. So my first interaction was her was with her. So I was working. Uh, uh, you see, uh, you have built a lot of templates in there. Uh, that was good and actually useful. But uh, on my experience and on some uh, right now literature experience that people use more parameters. For example, uh, they, are, they not only wants to access text like tweet as well, they also uh, retweet and uh, 
created at time, location as well. Yeah, the most important thing was time. So I will suggest that if you uh, again, most probably maybe you uh, will again build templates. So add some more parameters from the Twitter point of view. Because people need uh, that the more, uh, for example, time, mm -hmm. main location, mm -hmm. and uh, other the coordinates like longitude and latitude location as well. So just advertise the custom templates so that people can use more. I'm yeah. sure that people are also using currently, but in the future, it will use more. I'm just uh, uh, taking and I'm just telling based on my literature review experiences, people needs more parameters, not only tweet, they also need more, mental, uh, more parameter location and time and longitude and latitude. And some, uh, there is a, a two type of locations. I just uh, want to uh, specify there are two types of uh, locations in uh, tweet parameters. One is uh, the Twitter tweet location. The another one is profile. The person who is tweeting is his location. So people, sometimes they need one location, only the tweet location is also okay. But also we need the person's location, profile location as well, who is tweeting. So that uh, can be useful in various ways. For example, in disaster response, I am, my research area is crisis response. For example, in crisis response, authorities and response uh, agencies need to know that where and which location have uh, in the context of COVID, for example, which location have more number of cases, which location have more number of hospital capacities, and which uh, which location has more deaths, and so that they can, you know, they can that can be helpful in their decision making as well. So this is the little I want to say that suggestion to add more parameters in templates. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Liz is writing everything down. Yeah, we're gonna. Get I, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you can yeah, make yeah, like, sure. yeah we can hopefully to improve or uh, based on your opinions so yeah, i think yeah. that's all the question i got for today thank you janet yeah yeah oh thank you to you i got uh, i may have got your name as oh, well. my name is martin <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you to martin too as well thank you liz she is very cooperative and thank you to miss I um I forgot her name. Who is working in US? It's Miss Xiao or something. Yes, correct. That's she, correct. She's yeah, she's also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in the end, I can only I can only say that it's flexible, usable, cost friendly. So people in uh, research in data analytics go for it. It's for you, people, guys. I highly recommended that. I have even published my paper in uh, SCI Journal for that. If they want to read and so because it because of the data collection by octopus so i'm also working on my third paper as well so i hope to collaborate more in future yeah definitely <laughs> we'd like to read more of your research paper and see yeah. what you find about this work yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so much <clears throat> so thank you so much we'll let you get back to your work thank you. yeah thank, thank you. you have a nice day in shenzhen oh sorry have a nice evening in shenzhen <laughs> Stay in touch. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Bye. Octopus dedicates making data collection an easy, efficient, and enjoyable experience for those who are in education and in other industry. We are more than happy to hear from everyone regarding how our products and our service can serve you better. There are more stories between Octopus and users coming up. Please subscribe and stay tuned.